Thursday GIS News for Wednesday, 5th March. I am Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, government reiterates its commitment to public officers. Evaluation of the first access farms road under Marip soon to be completed. And Attorney General says Grenada must play its part in the fight against money laundering. That is the, those are the headlines. Details are next. Welcome back, viewers. Government has issued a statement reiterating what it describes as its unbreakable commitment to public workers to honor in full all the increases that were negotiated during the previous negotiating cycle. It says coming into office a year ago under extremely difficult fiscal constraints and amidst a gloomy economic climate, the administration of Prime Minister Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell has made two sizable payments to public officers, honored the 6% increase that was due to them and still managed to pay salaries on time each month. In light of this, and with the understanding that the first quarter of every year is marked by its own fiscal limitations, the government has had to request the indulgence of the public workers in accepting a revised schedule for the third payment installment. But some in the trade union movement are disappointed that they were not informed earlier. And as a result, government has apologized for this. The statement adds that government had expected to have signed the letter of intent with the IMF by the end of February and the inability to receive national consensus and thus a resolution on that matter is therefore partially responsible for the delay in payment. Not being able to meet the proposed end of February deadline for the back pay, the government has promised to get back to the workers by March 17. Government says it is seeking to make this third payment at the earliest possible time and public workers will not lose any of their money that is due to them. GIS saw the comments of the man on the street on Wednesday on the union's position. I do not think that this is the appropriate time to take stri strike action. Remember this is not, I would say, a party, political party thing. I would think it is a Grenada concern. And while I am very much in sympathy with the teachers, again, I do not think it is the right thing. And I think the teachers would believe that also. Perhaps they think strike action might speed it up. But speeding it up is not the common sense thing to do. Okay, um, we are all asked to make sacrifices. And therefore, I personally would appreciate if the teachers would hold on for some time uh, to see, you know, what would happen. Because it is a concern of everybody. It's not just a teacher thing, it's everybody's thing. So please, my position is that they should hold on. Because if, in, in truth, and in fact they will be getting it at a later, later stage, they should hold on. So I support it 100% and I just say enough is enough. They could wait because the year now start, and um, last year they got um, they got two two um, payment, and the year now start, you know, is just three months ago, so they could hold on, you know, because my grandchildren they go into school. I love to know that the parents get in, and I have a daughter teaching, you know, so we like everything good for everybody, but they they could hold on a while. 
Government says it is important to know that when it came into office, public workers had received had neither received increases nor back pay in four and a half years under the previous administration. It reiterates that the entire region is going through a tough economic period of less than robust growth and high public debt, and added that neighboring Barbados, which traditionally has always had a more vigorous economy to its Eastern Caribbean neighbors, has had to shed over 3,000 public workers even after public workers there had not received any salary increases in six years. The evaluation of the first farm access farms road to be constructed under the Market Access Rural Enterprise Project on MAREP is completed and work is expected to begin soon. Details from Karine Maureen. The farming community of Willis in rural St. George's will be the first to benefit under this project with the construction of the Granton and Grantin roads. These roads are two of the five access roads that will be done under this project. The Ministry of Works is responsible for the preparation of the scope of works. CTO in the Ministry of Works, Winston Gabriel, says three more roads will soon undergo evaluation. To date we have completed the evaluation of the Granton and Grantin roads in in St. George's, which we have submitted to MAREP for the no objection. We are now presently working on roads resource in St. Mark's, Bopland in St. Mark's, and Bella Coco Road in Montrich in St. Patrick's. Farmers in the area are in high anticipation for the access roads to their farmlands in the community of Willis. I, I will be happy if this road is done as quick as possible so that farmers in the area higher than where I, I am will have the access with... Well, it will be a good thing for the farmers and even the youths coming up, they will do a lot of more farming. Okay, I think that will yeah. encourage them to get yeah, to do more farming and things. Right. It will be a real good thing for you know, the people around you know. mm -hmm. I don't know if I might live to see it. they do it. Mm -hmm. It might be more for the youth and things okay. in the near future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm glad for that. The place does be wet, muddy sometimes. You know, if you get a road, so it would be easier for us to go and come from the garden. Mm -hmm. As like if you have to carry down a load and so, mm -hmm. and you have a road, well, you know, if you have a vehicle, it would be quite easy. The CTO says the Mara project has many components. However, the farm roads component will give farmers better access to their lands, both in the planting and harvesting stages. The project is a critical project because not only the roads, it's, I mean, there are other facilities which, you know, you get under the project. We, as I said, we have a bridge in Shambo, which was broken a couple of years ago and which we are now doing a design for so that the farmers can get to that area. I think there's some building projects that they will be looking at and sort of other little community projects to assist the people in the area to develop themselves. In taking up office in 2013, the Keith Mitchell-led administration found it necessary to revamp the market access and rural enterprise development project, MAREP, to provide certified vocational training, support entrepreneurship and innovation, among other things. In the 2014 budget presentation, Prime Minister Mitchell announced that $4.25 million has been allocated for this project to create jobs in the rural communities. Karin Moraine reporting for the GIS News. The fight against money laundering and terrorist financing is a global one and Grenada must play its part. Attorney General Kajitan Hood says if Grenada fails to do so, the country can be blacklisted by organizations such as the United Nations. Mr. Hood, who is also the chairman of the newly established Anti-Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Committee, says government has been working on a number of recommendations which will prevent the country from falling into that bracket. Some of these include passing legislation in Parliament, which provides the framework for action to be taken. They put it in a nice way so that we do not think that they are forcing themselves upon us. But once we are not compliant with the rules, then we get blacklisted. Presently, Ghana is throes of a crisis because the whole process has been politicized. And the necessary legislation that needs to go through parliament can't go through parliament because the opposition party refused to agree. And Ghana now is blacklisted. Ghana will be reported to the FATF and then the kind of consequences that will follow will be dire. 
Mr. Hood says the assistance of the public is paramount in this process and having the right laws in place to fight the problem is necessary. The safeguards that are put in place we believe are necessary. And I know that the FIU is in, in contact with the banks and the other financial dealers and we are listening to your concerns or whatever relief can be granted. We'll do our best. It will have to go to the Cabinet Parliament to make this, the adjustments. But thank you for turning out today. And I trust that we have everybody on board and we'll work very hard to make Grenada a safe place for financial transactions and a place where the world will realize is open for proper, legitimate business. Today, Wednesday, March 5th, was observed as National Day of Penitence, as agreed on by the Conference of Churches and the Ministry of Religious Affairs. Today is also Ash Wednesday, which is the official beginning for Christians of Lent. For Christians, Lent is the 40-day period of preparation for Easter Sunday. Chairman of the Grenada Conference of Churches, Reverend Osbert James, says this is the time people need to do reflecting and soul-searching. A retreat, as it were, into oneself to look at one's life and see how that life is in relation to God. We have been saying for eons that Grenada is a Christian country, and yet people do not live lives that are owned by Christian values. Um, predominantly they don't. Um, you find that adherents of other religious faiths tend to be more committed to their own traditions than we are. And so what we are doing is to call people, and, and although I mentioned Christians, we're calling all Grenadians of all faiths, to take this time to reflect on our relationship to God and to see how far we have been and seek to return to God. I, I, I believe that penitence, is a prerequisite for prayer. Yes. Whenever we have issues, national concerns, we say, let's have a day of prayer. But we never seem to ask people to get right with God. I believe relationship must come before request, always. Mm -hmm. You're watching the GIS News. We'll be back after this break. In 2012, Grenada was declared free of indigenous measles, rubella, and congenital rubella syndrome. So, in order for us to maintain this status of elimination, we must ensure a high level of immunity, meaning that our population, especially children, are vaccinated against these diseases. The Ministry of Health is making a special appeal to all parents to ensure that their children are not only vaccinated, but are vaccinated as scheduled. Vaccines are available at all health facilities. Vaccination is an act of love. Vaccinate your family, protect your community. This message comes to you, compliments the Ministry of Health and PAC. certification process under the new Imani program is due to begin in a matter of weeks. That is according to program manager Mr. Norman Gilbert. He was at the time highlighting some of the accomplishments and plans of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Religious Affairs new of the new Imani program when he hinted that participants under the direct skills training are close to completing their courses. Following this, they will be assessed and presented with their certificates. The direct skills training caters to the needs of participants who do not have any skills or qualifications. It gives them the opportunity to receive theoretical and practical knowledge of interest areas in a classroom setting from qualified and experienced service providers. With the first level of training completed, he announced that level two is due to commence shortly. The Ministry of Social Development and the Ministry of Caracol